asserting their authority as a, a living, tr a true living being and having the ability to travel. I don't know, you're driving, mate. I don't know, I was traveling. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard that before? Oh, so it's, oh, is this like a way to try and evade like a police incident? Sovereign citizen right to travel freely. Oh, I see. I was traveling. I wasn't driving. To drive and to use a license is to do business. That's the whole deal with the sovereign. Oh. Separating from business, supposedly. Does it? I know a full sovereign person who does is right into all that kind of stuff. And he talks about, talks big game about what you can say and how you do it. But it doesn't have very many examples of doing it. I think it all falls back to that whole... You know, and has spent time in jail. Did you know that police punch people? <laughs> That's it. That is... And you just really got to think that through before you like get... Before you start getting sketchy with one of them. I find that people are far more receptive if you're nice to them. If you start off with attitude, then attitude you're going to receive. Uh, and the hard bit with that, like that's 100% true. And so the hard bit with that is where you've got like bad blood with Brian's. And, and so yeah. Brian comes along and you're immediately suspicious of uh, And that that's works with police officers or whatever. Like I don't, I, I immediately, like I'd try to be polite with the police officer, but the police officer also can detect like an immediate hostility because I'm just not. I haven't had positive experiences with police. Yeah, when one engages me, I'm not seeing that as having a great outcome. And just that sensible, like not sensible, but it, it can be sensed. And then they're like, hey, what's this fella up to? Yeah. Like, yeah well, Hang on. Not he's not acting suspiciously, but he's, he's nervous. He's looking for some outcome, which really all I'm here to do is to look at your credentials and ask you questions. It will make you feel extremely uncomfortable. Yeah, and I don't see how then saying to them that I'm a sovereign being and they don't have rights, I mean, he's going to help that. That's not going to help the uh, whole uh, making this as quick as possible without any form of transaction occurring and bidding each other a, a fine day and moving on. During peak COVID, I was, where was I? Where was I? I was in Sydney and then I went to, no, was I? I was in Victoria and I was going, bouncing out through via Adelaide to Alice Springs. And then I think I was in Melbourne. And I remember travel at that time was a bit nuts. Oh, it was pretty nuts. Yeah, peak. Yeah. And, and it was where we were allowed to do that, but it was super difficult. It was like you were one of six people in the airport. And anyway, I had left where I was living. So I didn't have the residence. And I'd even, I've even got like a change of thing with, I had a change of thing with the Electoral Act, like with the Electoral Commission yeah. to say that I was like a person without, like I was at whatever I was, like a person who had no fixed address and and but i had the zone for if it was a federal election like i'd still like my opinion was valued there yeah so anyway i'm in the airport and i didn't have to fill out like all this paperwork about where you're going to be and people and all the things and i'm like i don't have an i can't fill this out i don't have an address holy fuck oh the, you don't have a permanent residence yeah, just completely broke their mind. And and so, yeah, ended up with a couple of police officers, assault rifles, nearly missed my plane, long, hasslesome things. Jeez, man. And then when I got to Alice Springs, it was more hectic than that. And so I had to write down all the places I might stay. Since I was not at one place and I was going to be at maybe multiple places, I had to, like, this is just absurd. Like, they're trying to, like, so if you were on the plane and the plane was found to have a a toxic individual on there, like an infected individual, and then you need to oh, be notified. Oh, the quarantine procedures and the... Yeah, totally. Yeah, quarantine procedures. So, super scrub. You know, and then, like, okay, so I'm going to write down 10 addresses. And places where I possibly might be. That doesn't even make sense to do that. They let me do it. It was better than assault rifles in Melbourne. And just trying to explain to this person who's then bristling at you. And I wasn't even up, like, I was trying to be super peaceful and just be like, well, I wasn't, maybe I had a bit of cheek in me, I'm pretty sure, actually. Mm -hmm. I was a bit cheeky. I was like, did they pull out the color chart for the terrorism skin color chart on you? No, I, I, so you're saying like I could have had like melanin profiling. Could have had some mel melanin profiling going on. You never know. I suspect that I've generally experienced that in airports and things. Fall into that certain melanin profile that requires a further investigation. Yeah, I'm likely to have a pipe bomb or something like in my shoe because I've got skin that doesn't go red and flush in the sun. That's it. Enough ginger in you. I'm obviously suspicious, which is uh, the, the weapons I carry tend to be like much more insidious. Yeah. Verbal viruses. <laughs> yes. Viruses. That's right. No need for a, I uh, see so you brought a virus to a, a gunfight. Yes. Yeah. That's it.